In this video, we take a look at modes of addressing memory, including immediate, direct, indirect, and indexed. So as we know, information is stored when a computer is running in main memory, and these locations in main memory are addressed. There are various addressing modes which can be used. Four that you need to know about are shown on the screen now. Let's look at them in a little more detail. So once an instruction has been fetched, it then has to be decoded before we can execute it. This process involves splitting the binary that makes up the instruction into an opcode and an operand. So here we're assuming a word size of eight bits where the first four bits represent the opcode and the last four represent the operand. For example, the instruction 00011010 is made up in this example of an opcode 0001 and operand 1010. So what might this instruction actually mean? Well, in this instruction set for our fictional processor, we can see the opcode 0001 is the machine instruction to add. So we know that this instruction needs to add something, but add what? Well, the operand contains the value 1010, and in binary, that equals the deanery value 10. So if we're using immediate addressing, the instruction means add 10 to the accumulator. As a line of assembly code, the instruction would be add 10. However, by utilizing different addressing modes, the operand 1010 in this case can take on different meanings. So we've just shown you the example of immediate addressing. This is sometimes called an immediate operand. The value in the address part of the instruction is actually the value to be used. So the memory doesn't actually have to be searched to find the required value. In essence, the instruction add 10 literally means add 10, not add the value in address location 10. And of course that 10 would actually be represented in binary as 1010. With direct addressing, the value in the address part of the instruction is a reference to the address in memory where the required value is located. So in this case, the instruction add 10 means go and find whatever is in memory address location 10 and add that to the accumulator. For example, we go to memory address 10, 1010, and we find 14, and that's what we add because 00001110 is 14. Indirect addressing. So here, the value in the address part of the instruction is a reference to a memory location that contains the address in memory where the required value is located. So in this case, the instruction add 10 means go and find memory address location 10 there you'll find another address, go to this address and add what you find to the accumulator. So we can see here, we go to memory address 10, we find memory address 14, we go there and we find the contents 169 and that's what we're adding. Now this mode of addressing memory is incredibly useful as it means larger address ranges can be used to reference data and instructions. OK, let, let's go into that last point in a little more detail because it can be a bit difficult to get your head around at first. In our fictional example computer, we have an 8-bit word with a 256 bits of main memory or RAM available. So 2 to the 8 means we have a maximum of 256 combinations of zeros and ones. You can see that here on the screen. But remember, we only have 
four bits available for the operand, which is where we're supplying the memory address. Well, two to the four means we can only address a maximum of 16 possible unique memory locations. So memory locations naught to 15, which is showed here. Now, if we could only ever use direct addressing, there'd be no point putting any more physical memory into your machine beyond four bits, as we couldn't physically reference the memory location beyond memory location 15, or in this case, 1111. That wouldn't be an issue, of course, if we could use all eight bits to store an address as the number of locations then we could reference would be 256. Of course, there are lots of 8-bit locations where we could store the real addresses, and these are all in memory. So with indirect addressing, the address in the instruction is the real address where we'll find the address of the data required. So what we're saying is, go and find memory address location 10. There you will find another address. Go to this address and find what you need to add to the accumulator. So this is why indirect addressing can be so useful, because it means the larger addresses in memory can now be used to store data. It gets around the limitation in this example of only having a 4-bit storage space for the memory address in the operand. Finally, we have indexed addressing. Imagine the contents of an array of 100 items have to be added together. If the first item in the array is in location 10, we would need instructions such as add 10, add 11, add 12, etc, etc. Essentially, we would need to use the same instruction 100 times. It would be much more efficient to use an index register. The index register is set to zero, so the first value is taken from 10 plus zero. After this is done, the index register is incremented and the same instruction is used again. This time the address is 10 plus one. This is why an array needs to be stored in contiguous memory locations. We store the address for element zero of the array in the index register and then increment. So in our example, add 10 means go and find memory address location 10 plus the value in the index register, which is currently 30011, and go to memory address 13 and add what we find there. OK, so let's see whether you've got all that then. Let's take the line of assembly code LDA8, which means load 8. So load 8 into the accumulator. What value will end up in the accumulator using each of the different modes of memory addressing? Pause the video and see if you can work it out. So with immediate addressing, load eight literally means load eight into the accumulator. Simple as that. Direct addressing means go to memory location eight and load whatever's in there into the accumulator. So that's five. So with indirect addressing, load eight says go to memory location eight, you'll find a memory address, which is five. Go to that memory address, take the contents there and load it to the accumulator. So we're loading zero. And finally, indexed addressing, load eight, we take memory location eight, add the contents of the index register, zero, one, zero, zero, which is four. So we've got eight plus four, which is 12. Go to memory location 12 and load the contents of that to the accumulator. So that's 23. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are immediate, direct, indirect and indexed memory addressing?